Hello, everyone. This is Michelle Moross. And this is Dr. Smiley. How are you? <laughs> I can never do it right there. No, just do the opposite. That's it. Okay, well, you just you have reached Amplifluence Podcast, and we today have our topic, which is the three R's of amplifying your influence. Isn't that great? I mean, we yeah. have ABCs that we always do as our foundation, and we pick some other gold nugget we can do. You know what we should do is all these shows that maybe someone missed a couple, we should take all these gold nuggets and turn it into some type of book. We'll come up with a title later. But let's let's you know darn well we will. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I almost know darn well. Let's let's uh do that. Darn well. Okay, well, let's start off the show with A, because first we're gonna go with the A B C and then we'll what go into influence. What is Amplifluence? Oh, that's a good question. Amplifluence is a, a brainchild of all of ours that uh, we amplify the influence of speakers, authors, and, well, basically, influence. Anyone who has influence. But we say amplify your influence because everyone, in order to make a difference in this world, needs to have some sort of influence. Think about it, everybody in social media. They're all trying to get followers or something or the other. But what we do here with Amplifluence is we rising tides lift all boats, basically. We come together and we amplify each other by learning from each other and then sharing each other. Is that a good way to? Yes. And if you truly are amplifying something, you're not distorting it. You're making it as pure and clear as possible as it goes out to the world. And the more people you are able to impact with a message, the more abundance you'll create because that impact, if it is of value, will be returned in karma, will be returned in people wanting to work with you, et cetera. So there is a uh, a lot of ter tertiary moves here that you are giving to the world, the world's giving to you, and we have a better planet as a result of it. Ka-ching. Ka-ching. So let's go to A. A is always add value to life. And our friends Robert and Noel peterson have a podcast called that right they do and they have been just so integral in having the dose of hope uh chapter authors become podcast guests as well as having their podcast guests become authors and dose of hope so talk about adding value two ways that's been fantastic and they also uh, add value because they looked at perfect publishing and said you know what you need to automate more of it and they they weren't just the the person that said what the problem was or what the solution was, they became the solution. So yeah, we're excited. It. We're excited. And I told Noel yesterday that I was going to declare this on the show, but um, we've never done much over a hundred books in a, in a year. And my intention next year, 2024 is to do 1000 books. Awesome. You know, and, and I shouldn't say me. I, I want us to do 1000 books. We are doing them in this style of compilations, keep smiling books, dose of hope books. But the big one is republishing. So many people make a mistake, either self-publishing or they pick a publisher that doesn't know how to really create a marketing system, a campaign for them, doesn't know how to bring the impact of the book to the world. And so why should they have to pay that for the rest of their life? Yep. Why? And republish. Let's make this happen. Let's come together. Let's make it work. You know, it's kind of like if you had a car, it's a really good car. It runs perfectly and you get a flat tire and you go, well, I guess I can't drive that anymore. So the Republish is the new tires so you can run again. <laughs> I like that. Well, and we also have another adding value to life is we have our friend who does the Your Success magazine. Yes, we do. And what a wonderful young man he is. Rich. <laughs> well, Rich Parsons actually in Dose of Hope too. So the cool thing about every person we mentioned is you can read their story of how they create who they are, what their purpose in life is, and how it impacts the world. So Your Success Magazine is a wonderful partner, and we take their magazine across the U.S. to all the Amplifluence events, which end up being two kind of cool events. One is a mover and shaker event for the people that are charismatic, that are speakers, that are causing all these wonderful things to happen. The next day is the legacy piece. So can you, I mean, that's such a beautiful blend. And, and the reason I love this is I was describing this to someone the other day that the mover and shaker event is almost like the people I need to talk to to say, where's your legacy? And the next day is the legacy piece where they talk to you and say, and you say, where is your message on stage? Where are you showing up as the leader? And I just love that that cross actually causes the opposite effect in what we do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we ain't stupid. Hey, <laughs> we put that stuff together for a reason. 
Well, and then okay. we have we have our buddy Todd Wester who does the monetization uh, consulting and strategizing. So, I want to give the shout out to him because without him, there is not the trifecta of how this all works. That is true. Yay, Todd. Okay, ready? You've got a list. I, I have one name of that I know of whose birthday is next week, and actually, it's next week. Wednesday. This week. Yeah, this week. You mean? Oh, it's this week. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's the twenty second. So yeah, let's do next week. Next week. Kari, Kari Petrush, she did the uh, the uh, Zondra TV uh, weekend with me. So <clears throat> her birthday is today. Yay! Happy birthday, Kari! And we all got together on Sunday the nineteenth for the Zondra TV uh, premiere with Sally Wurr and all, and we had a lot of fun. I just Who had, are your birthdays. Well, I have a lot, but I just had an idea for how you will have more birthdays at the on each show when you show your birthday book. Because your birthday book has birthdays in it. <laughs> so I'm going to read some of mine while you look, okay? So Michael Gerber with the E-Myth, his birthday is on the 20th. Uh, you know um, Mamie. Mamie? It's Mamie's birthday. Yeah, Mamie's birthday. I was going to tell you because you, you love her. I love her. I was just talking to her yesterday. So that, now you know her birthday is in your book on the right day. And Jen Sugarmeyer is today. That's right. And I was I was getting to her. So see, this is cool. Isn't that cool? Oh, and you have a blank page. What what page do we need a birthday for? June 24th. June 24th. Okay. So Lucretia, what a great name, huh? Remember that Lucretia? Um, yeah. By, by Pled, Sweat, and Tears? Lucretia yeah. Coleman. Lucretia Coleman did one of the Keep Smiling Black Women Influencer books. So she's an author. She's also in Dose of Hope. Uh, we have the lovely, and I do mean lovely, I was going to say it again, but Jen, Jen Sugarmeyer. And yeah. we met her at the Dallas Mover and Shaker. So had she not come as a result of Matt Dawson and TK Klund, who just did his big event. And then I have we'll Charles. We'll talk about him later. Yes, Charles. You Burke. know who else? No, who we missed? Who? Oh, no, we didn't miss. No, 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 we're good. We didn't miss her. Well, Charles Bird has a mastermind called Pure JV. And he teaches the essence and uh, fine tuning of how to do JV in a very integral way and a very efficient way. So he is the man. And then I have a couple of shout outs real quick. Doug Grady, who's an author and speaker, met him at Secret Knock. Alan Taylor, who's a media guy, uh, he has a podcast, does all kinds of great uh, interviews. He's on the 21st and met him at Secret Knock as well. Sherry Watson, I have to connect you to Sherry Watson. She is a person that is really good at getting sponsorship at a massive level. Crazy, crazy level. Uh, Teresa Royal Brown is the first person who believed in the Umbrella Syndicate shortly after my mom passed of Alzheimer's. She brought me into some uh, basically black women influencer conferences. So big shout out to Teresa Royal Brown. And uh, Katie Dow, I met last year at the Las Vegas uh, pageant. She's Mrs. Texas. Mrs. You've Texas. met so many people. And she's on the 21st. And then James Cooper, he's in Baltimore. He's an author, speaker, and a very inspiring guy. And finally, Lynn Montgomery. I don't know if you know Lynn Montgomery, but he does fascinating events, really, really cool events. Um, he's definitely an add value kind of guy. He he shares with you how you bring value to the stage. So I love him, Lynn Montgomery. So we'll, we'll connect you with uh, Dr. Mraz. Sounds good. You keep saying Dr. Mraz, and it's scaring me, but you know what? You're a doctor. It's PhD, official. baby. Yes. It's been a week. Uh, am I supposed to talk about the birthday that we did mention last week? The one that's kind of related to me a little bit or not? Is that, is that suitable mm, this time? Or are we waiting? No. Okay. No, don't do it yet. Okay. No. I know we practice the script. Sometimes I forget a spot or two. <laughs> C <laughs> is for cookie. It's good enough for me. So C, connection. Con compilations and celebrations. And this is just a title because we are going to talk about all the events that we just went through and maybe share a couple of pictures. Cause if you don't know it already, Ken takes lots of really amazing pictures. So the first thing we did, well, that, well, we're going to go backwards. We are going to go to the most, the further one, the July event. Do you want to talk about that one first? Because that is a connection compilation and celebration all at once. And let me share. Let's see if I can do it. And this is so loaded with activities and events. I mean, the you know, we took into mind, we took into account that people are flying in from all over the United States and their hard-earned dollars with these crazy gas prices, hotels, everything. 
you are going to have a ton of value at this event because just one of the events by itself would give you enough value for this trip. We have, I believe, five events. Is that correct? Five, five events here. Is that right? Can you see this? I can. I can see it. I can okay. see it like it was yesterday. Okay. Well, what I have up there right now is the Washington, D.C., July 3 through 5, multi-author extravaganza hosted by Perfect Publishing, which is Ken Rashan. If you are watching this, uh, you can take a picture of that QR code. It'll bring you straight to the Eventbrite, and it has the details of everything we're doing that day. I'll, I'll pull it up on my phone so I can share with that, too, in a minute. But there's more. Get back more. Should, I, should I share some stuff about that, please? Let me share it a little yeah. bit. Oh, no, I want you so I can go do what I'm trying to okay. do. Okay. So um, during that event, we have five aspects of it, but we are going to ask you, the listener, to play big. Come to the event, learn about authorship. Come to the event, support authors. You're going to get free books. I guarantee we're going to get, be giving away free books. And you are going to be helping an author if you bring them to this event because that author will now have a community, a tribe that will actually help support them and be more successful. There are crazy, crazy stats that it's in the mid 90s and even upper 90s of authors that will not do a second book because they are underwhelmed. That is not a good place to be in life, underwhelmed. They're underwhelmed with the profit, the abundance, and the impact of their book. And hence the reason we think that 500 books next year will come over to Perfect Publishing for republishing because if your book is not moving, it's not impacting, it's not creating abundance for you, you're probably doing it wrong because you probably did the book right. The cool thing is, you did the book right content wise. You probably did the book wrong marketing wise. And you probably did the marketing program wrong because it probably doesn't exist. And you don't, a lot of people don't know how to do guerrilla marketing, which is making a thousand dollars impact like it's a $50,000 budget or a hundred thousand dollar budget. So you and I are going across the US, 30 cities, Southwest friendly. And we are going to these cities to awaken the world that there are movers and shakers in that city. There are authors, speakers, and all those people get to come together and work as a community. And we've seen so many examples of those ignition catalyst events turn into relationships, turn into major book sales, turn into all kinds of abundance. Okay. And I want to let anyone who's listening, you're not seeing the visual that we have up, know that. The link is also in the chat. It will be in the, the YouTube chat and the Facebook posts, all of them. Okay. So you'll be able and to it, find them. And if you would like to go to Facebook and look up this event, we'll, we'll go ahead and give a link there. But you have the ability to invite up to 500 people. And you don't know when you do things like this, how much you can change someone's life. I mean, me going to an event six years after I had helped Christoph Wyman, he had the ultimate sphere competition in Orlando. If I hadn't gone to that event, I do not really understand how this show would have happened. Uh, you would have never met me. <laughs> exactly. So you are one connection away from a million dollars. You got to actually play that big to find out which connection is going to take you there. So I'm, okay. I'm just excited about all the things we've created, but it's out of events, out of events. Okay. okay, here's the next one. Let's do it. Let's do the next one. We both went to Atlanta to the Rise Up Conference with uh, Pastor Bola Adapuju, and uh, she's with the, uh, she's awesome. Uh, oh, goodness, I just blinked on Women of Purpose. And we were there, and I want to share. Nope, wrong picture. Okay. I am going to share my screen because Ken took some phenomenal pictures. There it is. Can you see it? I can see it. That's Pastor Bola. But look at that one. I, I loved how she was being the whole time she was on stage. And not everyone bears their soul at that level. So when I had my camera, those shots are pretty effortless to capture how powerful she was on stage. Yeah, that was magical. It was magical to be there. And there was a whole bunch of us there. But look at him behind. Was, hey, wasn't that cool? The guy. Yeah. Yeah. His, He's actually feeling what she's throwing out there. Isn't that cool? Yes. It was a beautiful event. That's her husband. Oh, yeah. That's Dr. Tunda. Uh -huh. But Ken ran in, took pictures, and then ran back out. He was yeah, so that, that's, that's about five or ten minutes of pictures right there. The 
and I, I was I left and I said I got the photos I have the photos I need to show her what we can do and those are some of the books I saw on the tables near your uh, table Danita yeah she's awesome yeah she had about four books I think yeah I think you might have had them all here yep yeah I want to I want to definitely involve her in the events and also Amplifluence well, and she works with teens. So her story that um, she shared was that both of her parents passed away at the same time. And mm. she was a, she was a, um, well, she is a daughter of ministers. And then her parents died and she was lost. And so she now helps teens. You know, Hope is Dope would be a, a great project for her to be involved with. And our intention is to get that out to every single public school, private school, as a freebie, just let them have it as an ebook that they can read. Oh, and we should short, definitely reach out to her. Well, they're short stories, unlike the TED Talk style of. Dope. Hey, that's us. Hey, look at that. These we ladies were so wonderful. We pretty happy there. Yes. And uh, it was just a wonderful event. Yeah. So I'm just flipping through. Sorry. Don't ever apologize about showing the world what they can see and what we want oh, to look. Look, yeah. this was beautiful. Dr. Bull, I mean, Pastor Bull was yeah. amazing. Look at that. You can see that conviction. Oh, she she was channeling is what she was doing. Yes, was I beautiful. know, I know. Yeah, totally. Thank you for taking these pictures. My pleasure. And you know what? God has his own pace with you. And if you actually allow that to be, I got on the phone with her yesterday and nothing was supposed to happen until yesterday. And then today she's seeing the photos. So it's, it's a pace that you just have to allow it to happen the right way. Otherwise... Uh, as I, I used to tell my brides when we were doing weddings, there's only one thing you want to do in a wedding. You want to have flow. Mm -hmm. If you go too fast, you have a stressful wedding. If you go too slow, you have a boring wedding. You have to. Have yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the next thing that happened, um, you did not attend with me. You could not because um, you I, were actually I, home with your son because I didn't let you say it, but it was his birthday. Yeah. The Celebrity Softball Classic VIP Party in Dallas. Now, this is another predestined thing. I had no intention of going without Ken. And when Ken canceled, I'm like, well, fine. I'll be singing at the Prince, Tribute to Prince concert. And uh, I'll just do that. I don't need to do anything else. I was supposed to help uh, with uh, coaching some people going on TV and that got canceled. So I'm out there just to go to the Prince concert. Well, the morning of the Prince concert, they call me and say, um, the lead singer, Danny, got sick and we had to cancel. He had COVID and so we couldn't do it. Well, I go outside and it's 110 degrees and the stage that we were going to use is outside at Texas Live. And I'm like, we would all pass out. I mean, that was really hot. Yeah. Well, while I'm saying, oh my goodness, our can it's all canceled, my brother says, I have a derby to go to. You want to go? I said, sure, I'll go to the derby. And as we're going to the derby, we get another call from Nita Patel. And she says, I'm going to a VIP party tonight for the Celebrity Softball Classic. Would you like to come with me? And I said, my brother's like, yeah, I want to go. Michelle, will you just stay at the house? I didn't know I was supposed to go with Ken. And so she's like, well, then come. So we call TK and say, hey, can Michelle come anyways? He says, yeah, come on over. So I show up. And I knew that's where I was supposed to be. This is Nita Patel. Let's see. Let me share the screen. I have a couple of comments. You want me to interlace them right now? Please. So I was going to go to that event and I called you because I said, I'm getting all these events that are fashion events and pageant events and queen events. And I thought, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And it's really strange, but it was all about my son. It was all about his birthday. It was all about his weebelos. He graduated from being a Boy Scout to be a weebelo. And I was going to be in Dallas. You know what I mean? And the next yep. day was his last soccer game. And he went from saying he wanted to quit Boy Scouts to saying, I want to go all the way to be an Eagle. I don't know if he'll do it. But that's nine more years of, of, of Boy Scouts, which it blows my mind. If you do the right thing at the right time, it can actually shift that one degree and it'll turn into a completely different experience. So it was interesting that I heard fashion and staying here to meet Queens to not go to Dallas only really to see my son's experience. Every yeah. minute. Always perfect timing. Well, Nita Patel is the reason why I was now at the softball v, uh, celebrity softball classic that was um, organized by TK Klune. Mm -hmm. That's my brother. 
with Nita, but what happened? Oh, we were being silly. But anyways, you guys there was a silly. <laughs> what? You guys are being silly. What? See, that was us being I know, silly. But I can't believe it. I've never seen you being silly. That's weird. Well, the painting in this picture that I took, the woman painted it live on stage. Hmm. It was amazing. It, it was amazing how fast she painted it. It was like to the song, God Bless America. She painted it. That is neat. That is so cool. And then, oh, that's Matt. Yep, Matt he's, Dawson. he's one of the crazy, uh, crazy authors and he's smiling. Yes, he is. Oh. Book. oh, Craig Shaw. We have Craig Shaw. And uh, what's funny is I met him at Michelle's event, the Unsilent Voices in Las Vegas. Yes. Yes. And what, re what made me remember him was his glasses and his amazing watch on his arm. I'm serious. That's how I'm like, I know your glasses. Wait a minute. I know your watch. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um, and uh, oh, that's oh, oh, it's, it's not, it starts with an S. Oh, goodness. Forgive me for that. But we met all these really cool people at this event. Oh, and that's Bhavna. I met her in at the WEF in uh, New Delhi eight years ago. Oh, cool. So, and then I, 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 she walked in and I saw her. She was wearing a red dress and I couldn't miss her. And I'm like, oh, there she is, another lady in red. I, I know that she's got an inspiring story. Bob. Yes. You can feel it. Can feel it? Like that? Yeah, of course. Did I stop sharing? Oh, uh, yeah, you did. You stopped sharing. Oh, good. Well, no, you, didn't, you didn't stop sharing your heart. No, <laughs> I'm at the screen. Yeah. Okay, just I just don't want you to ever think that you're... Yeah. Okay, so that's the thing about... Um, we were talking about connection, compilations, and celebrations. It's all about amplifying. And so when you meet people, you connect, you you figure out how you can work together, and then you celebrate that 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 union that we all create together. I met so many people, and we all met so many people, and Ken and I met people at the different conferences we've gone through. And every one of them have some sort of a story that we want to share, right? And they want to share. And that comes around to what makes them who they are. Now, those people I showed you that I met at the VIP party, we all sat around and we, you know, we, we talked to like three in the morning, the next day, not that night, the next day we got together and, and talked till three in the morning. And each of us were influenced by other things in our lives. And like with me, and you asked me the same question, what influenced you? And I said, other leaders. I'm a voracious reader. And you asked me how many leaders, how many leadership books have you read? And I said, he has, did you read 50? And I said, I've read far more than 50. I mean, I've read a good 50 just with John Maxwell alone. Okay. Right. So I'm constantly picking up leadership books and Ken has encouraged me to do to make a book called the 50 book challenge. He has his on the 50 book challenge of fatherhood. I do mine probably on leadership. Well, I, have mindset. New, I have a new one that just came out last month and, and, you know, uh, Robert Peterson's doing one on the 50 book challenge on entrepreneurism. So here's the 50 book challenge on happiness. Yes. And look, this, this is what's cool. These are the actual books, the synopsis, and you can just and the, buy them. And the link. Yeah. The link right to buy them. And, you know, you think about it, how much you spend on a college education and how much you spend on all this stuff you do, whether it's going to help you or not. This is a whopping $20 you're spending a week to fit one whole hour into your life to learn about something you actually want to be the master of. And I, I will I won't argue in a, a contesting way. I'll argue the point that had you not read all those leadership books, you would not have mastered it. If I haven't read them and performed them. Right. So it's not just reading them. It's actually putting them into action and actually using the things that they tell about how to do and how to use and uh, methods and trial and error. Basically, I use them. Some of them I failed at. Some of them I did really well at, but I, I use them and adjusted them to me. Right. So that's, that's the important. Important, the 50 book challenge. So you're taking one book a week for one hour a week. A whopping twenty dollars. You can get them from the library too. You can download them. Uh, you might even be able to contact the author and go to the website, and they may have you know free downloads. So it's not an expensive process. Is my point. Yes. All right. So next, after reading, you want me to do the next one? Recommend. So when you look at gratitude, you look at what can you do 
to give thanks. And you probably have people like the person who you bought the book from. They changed your life that for that hour, you were able to learn something that may have escalated your abundance and your ability to have a, a life you enjoy. So recommend the book, recommend the author, recommend the speaker, recommend the person who just fixed something in your house and they did it honestly or, or fixed your car. Recommendations are so important because they're rewarding the person for good service, but they're also giving them an opportunity to have future abundance because they do it the job the right way. So that's recommend. And authors need recommendations because they don't ask for them. So if you have a, a thousand books in your library, find the best 20 or 30 and just take your time to do one, one review a week. It doesn't take but five minutes to do, maybe even a minute. My son has about 150 reviews. Anyone that would like to make his birthday a little bit more special, you can have three books. We don't want the reviews without the books being looked at, but it takes a minute to make these reviews and just say how they made a difference. And guess what the author feels like doing another book. Yes. Like they did the book for the right reason. So that's a uh, recommend. And then the last one, are you ready? Refer, <laughs> refer and thank, refer and thank. So when you refer someone like Michelle says, I just met this person who uh, has done a book or they're about to do a book and she refers them to me. She's enhancing their experience of what can happen with the book. She's enhancing my experience as a publisher, but she's enhancing her own experience at building value, building value for two relationships. So um, the, I just recently talked to Jen Duplissis and she says she gets more business by going back to thank the refer. And she says what the, what the refer did. So thank you for that. I was on a, I was on a podcast or I was, I got a, an event I got to speak at because you referred me. And so the person does what? They give two more referrals. <laughs> Jen says the average person that receives a thank you from her, uh, whether it's a text or a call, she does, she does a lot of calls, is that she gets two more referrals. I mean, what a great way to double and triple your business. <laughs> well, that's how I work with you. I referred yeah. you once and then you're like, oh, thank you so much. I went, well, I have other people I can refer you to. I mean, and it just grew. That's how our friendship grew was constant referral. And then you were referring people back to me. We learned more about each other that we were able to talk about each other and, and switch. And that's what brought in Amplifluence. It's like, why aren't we working this together? I mean, we're working almost with the exact same people. So we might as well just bring this together. Well, I have this book that was my very first book called Becoming the Perfect Networker, Succeeding One Connection at a Time. And the third chapter is called The Power of Three. And the reason it's called the power of three is because there's three people involved. It's the person who connects two people by referring them. And what happens is the two people can't help but talk about the person who referred them first. So you become really the accolade of the possibility of both their lives being changed and your life being changed as a result of it. So it's really nice. And, and they can't help but say, what can we do for him or what can we do for her? <laughs> Sounds good to me. I'd like it. I do like it. Okay. You're funny. Oh, did I, am, am I supposed to talk about, what am I supposed to talk about that? Was you, it can too talk, late? you can talk about it right now. Good. This is exciting. Kenny has written the president before, but this is Kenny's new book going to president Biden. And here it is. And Kenny wrote, I'll we'll probably have the keep smiling cards fall out of it. He wrote right here. Wow, he wrote a lot. He did. He said, President Biden, thank you for being our president. Hope you like my book. <laughs> and, That's cute. And then there's a nice little photo in the back. Um, oh, my gosh. That's funny. Yep. I don't, I don't remember what he said. Let me see. Leaders are powerful in making our country. Ah, since this is leadership, I can read that, right? Leaders are powerful in making our country uh, and the world a better place to live in peace and harmony. I am excited that every president um, is elected with this in mind. I hope one day I can be a game changer for our great country. President Biden is from Delaware, and I hope to meet him one day to thank him for caring so much about our country. Oh, that's sweet of him. Okay, so our topic today was the three R's. We done did it. Three R's of amplifying your influence, and it's to read more, recommend more, and refer more, and think. 
And we are almost to our 30 minute time period. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Ken, is there any last minute things you'd like to add in there? Except I know one. Okay. What is it? Hmm. Well, while you're doing that one, I will do my one, which is anytime you see us hold up any book during the show, whether it's Hold My Crown, Dose of Hope, any book that we hold up, you are allowed to have the book for free. So, you just need to uh, text us your email or put us put your email in the uh, direct message, whatever you want to do to reach out to us. We will get you the book electronically. Is that what we're committed to, Dr. Mraz? Yes, I'm trying to see how I can just... There, that's what I was trying to do. Okay. There. If you are watching live uh, and you're, well, even watching the replay... Take a picture of that screen to get that QR code and register to join us in Washington, July 3 through 5. We've got all sorts of goody things happening, um, and I wrote them down. On July 3rd, we are, well, the morning is free, and we're going to go to Papatello's Italian restaurant from 4 to 7 for a mixer to get to know each other and give you the game plan for what's happening the rest of the week. The fourth, we're going to Busboys and Poets for a signing event from 1 to 4. And then we're going to dinner at Season 52 from 6 p.m. on. Then that night, we're going to the rooftop of the Capitol One building. And we're going to be watching the fireworks from the top of the building. And then on the fifth, we're going to the Library of Congress and doing a big tour as authors and hopefully get to see our books inside of the Library of Congress, uh, oh, or at least the file of it, and then go to Chima's in Shima. Tyson's Corner, Shima's, sorry, Shima. Shima. Shima's uh, for dinner that night. Dinners and cocktails is really what we're going to be there for. So, And it's a Brazilian steakhouse. I mean, it is five-star type of location. It's, it's pretty stellar. We were there for the uh, Hold My Crown Women, uh, Hold My Crown Women of Grit, Share Stories of Resilience. You, know, you left much. something out. What? I think you left out possibly, potentially the most important thing. What? The optional photo shoot at the iconic uh, places at the National Mall. We're going to be photographing the authors. Yeah. yeah, the authors are going to be photographed at three, minimally three locations. And they this is optional, but you get to show the world that you were at NDC and you were in front of the Washington Monument, uh, the, the uh, Lincoln. Oh, you Portal. know why I took that out? Why? Because I was going to ask you if we could do it on the in the daytime of the third I don't, I don't mind what day we do it. In fact, we can do okay. it on the day of the 5th. Um, no, the, we can't. Yeah. We don't have time on the 5th. Okay, very good. So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I know a lot of you are moving your schedule around to the 4th and the 5th for this photo shoot. It's probably going to end up on the 3rd. So, we are going to be at a minimal of three because it's pretty easy to get to these all these areas uh, quickly by walking. So, Library of Congress will do that day where we are in front of every... We don't need to do that during the photo shoot because we'll do it that day on the 4th. But the other places like MLK or uh, the Lincoln Memorial or Washington Monument that we will do, and possibly even the Capitol, possibly okay. even the Capitol. Well, and I'll I'll change that on the Eventbrite. So when you scan that, it won't have it on the third, but we'll, I'll change it. Uh, the The cool thing about it is we're going to get pictures. We're going to have flags all over the place, and we're going to have books all over the place. Pitches. We're going to get get your pitches. Get your pitches. So thank you so much, everyone, for joining us uh, for the Amplifluence podcast. We will see you next week. And until then, Ken, what do we always say? Well, I'm going to change it just a smidge. Amplify authors and speakers at this event, and you're going to start amplifying yourself. There you go. Ooh. Okay. I say be the best version of you and be unapologetic about it. We'll see you in July. Oh, we'll see you next week. And then we hopefully we will definitely see you July 3rd until next time. Be well.